Hi there, me again, your friendly neighborhood humble stroke assaulter. So what we're going to discuss right now is aphasia. Um, oh, before we get there though, uh, please, for those of you that have been recently concerned and thinking I might need an intervention from a hair salon or have been uh, monitoring my uh, lack of follicle organization um, or the amount of frumpery in my quaffing, please note that it has been suitably organized. So now... Let's get on to the meat and potatoes of the deal, uh, aphasia. Um, we're going to cover aphasia right now, mainly because, you know, I have it. Um, and then there's been a bit of an uptick recently, I've noticed, on some of the stroke groups that I belong to online about aphasia, and I'm dealing with it and whatnot. So I thought I'd go and do a thing just on aphasia. Now, aphasia, if you go by the National Aphasia Association, and we're going to assume that they might be a little bit of an expert, um... Aphasia is an impairment of language affecting the production or comprehension of speech and the ability to read or write. Right? So, but you don't have to have one and the other. You may not be able to read. You may not be able to write. You may not be able to comprehend incoming language. You may not be able to speak. Right? There, and, and it could be a mixed bag. So, <clears throat> aphasia can also be so severe, any form of communication is almost impossible. I saw that with my grandmother after her stroke. Um, and it could be very mild. It could be you can't recall objects or names, or you have difficulty putting sentences together, or, um, you know, various combinations they're in. Now, the great news is, Aphasia is almost always the byproduct of a stroke, the byproduct of a brain injury, the byproduct of a brain tumor, the byproduct of something to do with your brain has sustained some kind of damage. Um, be that dementia, be that Alzheimer's, be that a stroke, be that, you know, a drill bit to the head, be that a tumor, be that what have you. So, almost always aphasia, you got a broken thinker. Now, I had aphasia really bad the day of my stroke, and about 13 days after my stroke, about, about a week and a half, two week period, I had really, really pronounced aphasia. And I noticed that as my day progressed, my, my language abilities got better. So if I started, and, and then when I went to sleep, it was like a reset button kind of got hit in my brain. That's my experience. I can't say that's going to be your experience or the experience of your loved one. Um, I still have, at times, aphasia. Um, you will notice me doing this occasionally. Um, it's me trying to pull the word out of the air. Uh, my grandmother did that after her stroke, and then I've sort of adopted it. It's not mine. I claim it. Lick it, stick it, stamp it. Right. So, now, when it comes to aphasia, there's a couple different types of aphasia, right? And you could have expressive aphasia, right? Now, expressive aphasia is, let me get the definition here. Um, you know what you want to say, you just can't get it out, right? Now, you know that you want to have a certain message. You know exactly what you want to say. You're just having difficulty getting the message out. And that doesn't matter if it's written or verbal, right? Now, with expressive aphasia, you know the message that is coming to you. You are just having difficulty getting your message out. Right? Uh, then you have receptive aphasia, meaning the message coming into you is garbled. Right? I can hear what you're saying. I can read what you're what you what you've written. Right? But I don't understand the meaning of the message. Right? So, with with expressive aphasia. I'm not able to get my message out to the world. With a receptive aphasia, the messages from the world coming into the thinker get all scrambled. Now, sometimes people with receptive aphasia can take language literally. Um, I notice that sometimes I can do that. Um, and sometimes people that have receptive aphasia, your own speech patterns may be disturbed. Because sometimes you have difficulty hearing and understanding what you're saying. So as you're saying things, you self-regulate as just a matter of 
you know, instinct, right? Your lizard brain takes over and you just regulate what you're going to say. Um, with receptive aphasia, as you are speaking, your own speech may become disrupted because you're having difficulty understanding your own words as you're putting them out into the world. You know, anomic aphasia, this is one I have. Um, anomic aphasia is a person has word finding difficulties. It's called anomia. Right? So because of this, you're struggling to find the right words. And I, and I don't mean you need a thesaurus because you're in university or college and you're trying to write a paper and you're trying to find just that one right word for impact and effect. I don't mean that. I mean like picture a stove or an oven, range, whatever you happen to call it. Now picture you know what that thing is, but you're going to spend the next three minutes not being able to find the word. That thing in the kitchen, that big pistachio green thing, if you're a child of the 70s and the 80s. The thing that has the, those warm, hot, burny, roundy things on top. I put the food in the big square boxy thing and it gets warm and hot and it makes brownies. You know? Yeah, just imagine what that's like. Right? Just imagine you want peanut butter. Right? And you can describe peanut butter. You can do everything but actually say the words peanut butter. Yeah, that gets frustrating, right? Um, so sometimes you'll see me doing this again. That's me trying to pluck the word out of the air. Now, global aphasia. This is the most serious and severe form of aphasia um, that's generally seen immediately after a stroke. You have difficulty with any form of communication, be it inbound or outbound be it written, be it verbal, right? Your, your comprehension, your ability to speak, your ability to read or write is just pooched. Right? And I can only imagine what that would look like. So, someone that can understand what you're saying, but has difficulty getting the language out, meaning expressive aphasia, I had that. And then I also have autonomic aphasia where I have word finding issues. Um, someone that has, you know, uh, receptive aphasia, meaning they can say what they want to say, but the language coming in gets garbled, right? That's another story. But now you've got the best of both worlds. You have global aphasia. Everything's impacted. And then the last one, which is a progressively deteriorating uh, deteriorating disorder known as primary progressive aphasia. It's a very rare disorder, thankfully, where people slowly lose their ability to read, write, talk, and comprehend um, what they hear in conversation uh, or read uh, in, in text, right? Um, there is no treatment to reverse it. Let me just say that again. If you happen to have primary progressive aphasia, um, there's there's no treatment. Right? There are strategies that can be employed, but at this current moment in time, there is no reversal treatment. You're going to have to learn new ways to communicate, be that hand gestures, be that a bliss board, be that a picture board, um, be that, you know, what have you. But that's not saying that you will not benefit from some of the standard interventions, right? Your aphasia could, again, could be mild, could be severe, right? There are many, many ways your aphasia could present, right? Now, with aphasia, it's treatable, right? So, you're going to see us, once you've had your stroke and you're in the hospital, there's going to be a bevy of people that show up to have conversations with you, and some of them you're not going to remember. <clears throat> So you're going to need to see it, and you should be referred to a speech and language therapist. Okay. And they're going to help determine exactly what type of aphasia you have. Um, and they're going to help generate a course of treatment. Now, speech and language therapy is there to help restore as much of your speech and language as possible. 
to reduce your impairment, to help you to relearn how to communicate to the best of your ability, right? To increase your activity level and your participation out in the world. Some cases to find alternate ways of communicating, such as using compensation strategies or aids. In other cases, they're helped to educate your family and your support system. Now, I'm gonna be honest, with the type of aphasia I had, it took work. And with the type of aphasia I had, um, I, I've mentioned this before, as the day progressed, my aphasia got better. And then it was like my brain hit a reset button in the wee hours of the night and I'd wake up and again, have difficulties. Um, speech and language can be exhausting right? because you're making the brain work. I know the one time I had speech and language and another time I had physio or occupational therapy, um, in both instances, it felt like my brain was on fire because right? I was forcing the brain to do something it really hadn't needed to do in a while. And that was also after my stroke. So I, I was exhausted, just physically, mentally ruined. Right? So they're going to do the assessment on you. And then they're going to have strategies, right? Now, you're going to have to learn in some cases new ways to communicate. And some of those may only be short term. You may use a lot of gestures. You may do a lot of writing, drawing, communication charts. Um, a communication chart is a large grid containing letters, words, and, and or pictures. Um, you may have flashcards. Um, you may need some form of assistance device, right? Uh, kind of like a medical speak and spell. Now, if you find yourself dealing with someone that has aphasia, right? Allow the individual plenty of time to respond. If the person that has aphasia feels rushed or pressured, they're going to get anxious and it's just going to bugger it all up. Right. Um, the more anxious, uh, the more nervous, uh, the more emotional that you get when you have aphasia, the more difficult it, it becomes. Use short, uncomplicated sentences. Right. Don't use a lot of fancy fifteen dollar words. Right. And don't change the topic of a conversation quickly. I had to train my parents to do this. Um, because of my, my language deficits, I couldn't handle, you know, the, the conver if the conversation changed too quickly and it wasn't congruent, I, I, I was lost, completely lost. Do not ask open-ended questions, right? You want to use closed-ended questions, questions that end in a this or that, yes or no answer system, not, you know, um, things that take a lot of effort. Please, this, this last one's a bone of contention. Do not finish the other person's sentences or correct their language errors, right? Um, because one, how do you really know what that other person wants to say? Um, B, the person that has aphasia is gonna get frustrated because you're trying to finish your sentences and you're acting in a demeaning fashion and it's going to create resentment. They're going to want to disengage from you and not be around you and not communicate with you. Right. Um, keep distractions to a minimum, such as background noise, radios. Um, you may need to have a pen and paper on handy to write down keywords, draw diagrams, pictures, right? Sometimes depending on the type of aphasia, that person might need, visual cueing to go along with their their verbal difficulties. If you're dealing with someone that has aphasia and they're not quite clear on what they're trying to get across, right? Don't fake it, right? Don't fake it, right? Because if you try to fake it, and they call you on it, again, you're going to be perceived as demeaning, belittling, patronizing, 
And there's, again, you're going to get resentment going on there. Okay. Um, and if they're having difficulty trying to find the right word, instead of finishing the sentence, prompt them. Describe the thing. Point to the thing. You know? Um, what letter does it start with? Things like that. Um, now then, how, how can aphasia be treated? Again, that all depends on the type of aphasia you have. So there may be um, medications you may be able to take. There may be behavioral therapies, uh, practice and repetition. Um, there is some instances where brain electrical stimulation may work, right? However, before you begin any course of treatment, please have an in-depth, informed conversation with your speech and language pathologist or therapist and, and or neurologist, right? You need to make sure the experts are on the right page so they can help describe to you what's about to happen. Some things that I found helpful for the type of aphasia I have, which would be um, getting the language out and then finding the right word. So I have um, anomia, and I have um, expressive, right? Well, one um, really good friend of mine uh, would challenge me and say, hey, give me, in a minute or less, give me words that start with the letter J, right? Um, or words that start with the letter L, Um other things I will do, a uh, technique I was given, was confrontational naming. So if I see a thing, I'll name a thing, right? Looks really weird in the grocery store, uh, but I will walk down the aisles and I will, like, aisle nine, you know? And then I will read the placard below, you know, snakes on a plane, heart attack in a cup, Cheerios, whatever, you know? Um, when I'm at home... If I'm having a bit of a rough patch, I will name things as I see them. Driving in the car, you see a street sign, you know, I'm going to read the sign. And again, these are going to be out loud. Okay. Um, and then another thing that's been difficult for me to learn was when I start to get overtired, um, confused, um, or very frustrated or emotional, that is when the stuttering and the stammering can, can come back. Uh, and that's a concern. Now, I'm starting to learn my triggers when I'm getting that way. A bit of a gut check, let's be honest here. Yeah, it's a, it's a bit of a gut check. Um, so, it's difficult, right? It's, it's completely difficult. Now, depending on your type of aphasia, Right? will depend on how they want to proceed. Depending on your type of aphasia will depend on how they predict the outcome. Right? So, and ultimately there's only really two treatment options. One, restorative, right? Which is aimed at improving and restoring any impaired function. And two, compens compens com compensating. Compens compensatory. Fuck. Aphasia, wonderful thing, um, where they give you strategies to compensate for deficits that can't be retrained or relearned, right? Um, so some of it will be a challenge, right? Um, now, there are um, various other, you know, strategies that can be used. Uh, one thing, when I'm having problems speaking, I will start to tap uh, to a rhythm, kind of like a metronome, right? Um, I find that helps get me into a rhythm where I'm able to, to get my words out. Uh, and again, that's not for the word finding, that's for the expressive part, trying to get the language out. Um, there are aphasia camps, uh, at least in Ontario, someone through my stroke group, they go to an aphasia camp. Um, every year um, where they have speech and language students um, and 
other practitioners and they learn all about aphasia and, and, and its impacts and strategies. Ultimately, I get that aphasia is a difficult thing. I get that aphasia can be isolating. Um, I get that it's very mentally debilitating um, having to learn how to talk again as an adult, learn how to communicate again as an adult. I, I get that. And all I can say is with a little bit of hope, right, um, a lot of perseverance, in a good clinical team behind you and supportive friends and family, right? the aphasia does get better. However, you've got to be willing to put the work in. Now, I've noticed I'm at the 21 minute mark, so I'm going to end this now because if I wanted to cover everything about aphasia, it could probably take me an hour and a half to two hours, and I'm going to land the plane right about now. So, if you happen to like what you've been watching over the past, coming up on five months and a few days, uh, please like, share, subscribe with your friends. If you happen to know someone that's going through their own journey post-stroke or supporting someone on their journey post-stroke, again, please like, share, subscribe. If there's um, something you want to see me cover, either leave a comment down below in the comment section or you can email me at strokeassalter at gmail.com. I say again, you can email me at strokeassalter at gmail.com. And if you happen to see either in yourself or someone around you the signs or symptoms of a stroke, a facial droop, Inability to raise both arms equally effectively or at all. Uh, inability to smile equally effectively or at all. Speech or language issues such as slurred, stuttering speech, inappropriate word usage for situation or context. Inability to stand unaided, general body weakness or weakness on one side. Please immediately place that person in a position of comfort and dial 911. Something so simple can save a life.